Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Gregor Grabarski, the knife designer you know as Kambu. Kambu lives and works in Poland and designs knives exclusively for one of my favorite companies, Best Tech Knives. Now, Gregor was originally on episode 264, but he has a number of new models coming out, uh, some of which will be uh, debuting at Blade Show this year, and he will be there in person to show them off. So we wanted to bring him back on the show and take a look at these models and talk about his first trip to Blade Show. Uh, but first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Make sure uh, that you're subscribed. Seems that some some people's subscriptions sort of slip away from them uh, in exclip inexplicably. So check that. Also, be sure to download us on your favorite podcast apps. Now, if you think what we do here is valuable and you want to help support the show, you can do so by going to Patreon or going to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, and that'll funnel you straight in uh, to the Patreon account. Or you could just click that uh, QR code uh, right here that Jim has up on screen. Either way, go there and check it out. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon to help support the show. The knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Gregor, welcome to back to the show. How you doing, sir? Very well, thank you. Hi, Bobby. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for having me here. Oh, man, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And what else is a pleasure is that recently, uh, Eric from Best Tech, uh, someone that you work with, sent me uh, a new version of one of your knives, one of your classic knives with Best Tech, and that's the Ornetta. We're going to talk about yes. this. The Ornetta now is being offered in G10, and D2, wait, it's D2, right? This uh, is N N N S N690. So we're right. gonna we're gonna talk about that in a minute because that's an exciting development. It's a very um, complicated and and beautiful design, uh, and now it's brought within reach to more people. So we're gonna talk about that. That's very exciting to me. We're also gonna talk about some new models you have coming out, and uh, one of which you'll be debuting at Blade Show. But before we get into uh, to any of that stuff, uh, let's find out who you are again, just in case people haven't watch 264 you're uh, a polish knife designer tell us how you got into knife designing and working exclusively with one of the best manufacturers out there that's right so hello everybody my name is Grzegorz Grabarski and I'm from Poland I'm knife designer working uh, with uh, Bestek knives and uh, now it's been uh, three years uh, that we are developing together uh, nice products, uh, folding knives, and uh, I managed to make around 15 designs so far, and uh, it's great. Uh, uh, do you want to know uh, how I started with my hobby? Or Yeah, yeah, uh, I do. It seems like uh, there are a lot of uh, great knife makers and designers coming out of Poland, and I'm wondering if it's in the water there or... Uh... You know how you got know. started. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's just because we we love knives in Poland, <laughs> like uh, in America. So yeah. Uh, uh, so at first uh, I started uh, about I don't know eight years ago as a photographer. I was uh, shooting uh, outdoor shots of knives and uh, posting it on Instagram. Uh, my account is. Uh, K O M B O U, uh, and I don't know. For the, I was one of the first knife influencers on Instagram. <laughs> uh, I was working with brands like uh, Bastinelli Knives, Custom Knife Factory, uh, and few more like Fox Knives Italy. And then after a few years, I uh, decided to uh, become a knife designer. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I'm sketching knives and guns since very young age. So uh, it was pretty easy for me. 
all I needed to do is to find again my greatest hobby, my greatest passion, my greatest love, which is knives. Yeah, and then you put that uh, put the artistic love into it, and uh, you can really come out with something pretty extraordinary. What what is your overlying design philosophy? I see when I look at your knives, I see a lot of the natural world uh, in them. They they seem very organic. Uh, but what what are you thinking about? What inspires you when you make these knives? When you design them? Uh, uh, my knives uh, are inspired mostly by nature, but also by the pop culture with uh, everything inside, like Hollywood movies like uh, video games, um, stuff like that. And also uh, the car design is something uh, yeah. which I'm passionate about. And uh, yes, I prefer uh, curvy lines uh, more than, you know, straight lines. So that, that's why my knives are so wavy. Uh, and I... It, I I'm doing the best to keep them as much artistic as possible, which is not easy sometimes. Bestek sometimes have a hard time with me. <laughs> well, I mean, I would imagine your designs, which are, which, uh, here, if you were, if you don't mind, hold up the uh, original Ornetta so people can see what okay. I'm talking about. Uh, I have it with me. I, I could see how Bestek, you might hand them a design. And Best Tech might roll their eyes like, man, this is going to be a lot of work. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> yes, there's, there is. Well, there's milling on the surface, a lot of different types of milling on the surface. And then there's contouring of the entire surface. And uh, there are a lot of dimensions there to get right to make that blade fit in there. Um, so it is it when you make these designs, how much of the mechanical aspect of the actual physics and the the design uh the the mechanics of it how much of that do you have under your belt um uh, or are you just designing for the eye and the hand uh okay so uh, i'm mostly designing uh an overall shape of knife mm -hmm. uh, with uh all the needed uh things around it like uh the blade length to the uh handle ratio and uh, stuff like that. And uh, everything else is going with help uh, of best tech engineers, uh, which uh, are very good in, in what they do. And there is a very good synergy between us. Uh, they understand my needs and I understand what I have to tell them <laughs> to make it, uh, you know, very close to original vision. So yes, I have engineers uh, on my back. Uh, I am not engineer engineer by myself. Uh, that's a that seems to be a great situation to be in, especially as an artist, because um, you know you can you can fully express yourself in the design of the knife, and then they might come to you and say, "Well, you're going to have to pare back this expression and make it a little more um, practical." It's exactly how it look uh, and. Uh, we have a very good team. The synergy is so good. Uh, they are not trying to, uh, you know, uh, cut something from knife. They are trying to chase the original vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very happy that Bestec, uh, uh, guys from Bestec are, you know, so patient with, with the small details I, I'm talking about to them. Change this, change that. They are doing a really great job to understand <laughs> what I have to say uh, through my designs. Uh, and uh, one more thing about yeah. ergonomy. Uh, I am pretty obsessed about, uh, you know, connecting ergonomy with, uh, with crazy looking. Uh, it means that uh, my designs uh, cannot uh, only look uh, look good or look uh, look you know special mm -hmm. uh, but it also have to uh, be uh, ergonomic you know so uh, it's not always uh, work 100 percent but i'm doing my best to 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 keep my knives you know useful and uh, you know what i mean uh, <laughs> well this is this is actually something i was going to ask you about 
um, is the ergonomics. I, I, uh, in my own knife collecting and, and using and appreciating, I vacillate, or I, I guess what I should say is that I have a taste across a full range. I love a totally rectangular neutral handle. And then I also love a handle like this, which, um, some people might say forces your hand into certain positions. I think force yeah. is a forceful word, uh, but it, it definitely uh, prescribes your grip in a number of different ways. Uh, this saber grip, this Filipino grip, this close-up grip. Um, this is actually good in a reverse grip, which is something I mentioned in my video uh, because I like to cap the pommel and you give a good place to wrap the thumb around. Um, so what I'm getting, even in a, re a reverse grip, if you had to hold it like this to do those, those chest pull things to cut wood, which, you know, okay. in a survival situation, you might, this is probably not what you're taking camping, but even in that situation, it, it manages to be comfortable. Uh, oftentimes knives with choils and swoops and curves uh, that force your hand into a certain position aren't comfortable in other positions. When you're designing a handle like this, what are your considerations? Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to hear that uh, it meets your expectations <laughs> uh, from the ergonomic point of view. Uh, and I, uh, I'm doing, I always, uh, it's kind of uh, that I feel what will be comfortable as soon as I design the first step of, of, uh, of the knife. Um, and I don't know, it's very intuitive. Because I, I, before I was uh, designing knife, I, I was kind of collector, and I had uh, many of uh, knives coming through my hands, uh, through my hand, uh, and not all were ergonomic. And I told myself, when I will design knives, uh, they will be uh, as ergonomic as possible. And sometimes people uh, w uh, look at the knife and said, "This this can cannot be ergonomic," and then they grip uh, take uh, it in hand and there is you know something like i didn't expect that uh, it's better than expected so <laughs> i think it's kind of success to surprise somebody with that oh yeah definitely and especially when, when you when you look at it and you think this is going to fit my hand one way but then you grip it and you see that it's way more uh, universal in hand and, and the different grips. I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> uh, so, so let's, let's continue with the Ornetta. If you could, if you could hold that up, this was your first, okay. this was your first, uh, high-end collaboration with Best Tech, or was it your very first collaboration period? Very first collaboration. Uh, this, uh, uh it, it was like I sent, uh, only sketch to Best Tech with mm -hmm. pencil on a white paper and it was Ornetta and uh, uh, I emailed them, ask if, if they want to make a collaboration and they immediately, uh, you know, uh, mail back and said, uh, give me everything you have, you know, <laughs> we want to make it. So I was very lucky, you know, with, cool. uh, and then, uh, uh, it was uh, around three years ago, and now we have around, uh, about 15 models accomplished 15. or almost accomplished. Yes. 15 models. Be that's... Oh, I was yes. going to say, that's amazing. That's a, that's a lot of knives. And, and for a company like Best Tech, who um, has been OEMing for a while and then uh, a few years back started, uh, you know, really pumping up its own output under its own shingle, it makes sense to go with a designer like you, Gregor, because your designs are challenging. And if they could successfully make uh, the Ornetta, for instance, that's a proof of concept for them. That shows the world that they're capable of making these kind of complex designs. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> if they make a dif difficult uh, design, uh, you know, from my head, they will better understand how to, for example, make more complicated OEM uh, work, you know, for, for other brands. And I'm really happy that they are not complaining. They are <laughs> maybe sometimes cry, but uh, <laughs> I'm not there. I'm here in Poland. It's like, you know, magic pencil for me. I'm drawing a knife. I'm sending to them. And then 
I wait around a half year uh, to get a final product in my hand. So <laughs> that's, you know, uh, that's kind of living the dream. Yeah, I'd say so. So let's take a look at some of the knives you have uh, that have come out this year uh, that you're going to be showcasing at Blade Show. And uh, and then, you know, I definitely want to see the one you're going to be debuting at Blade Show. But let's take a look at some of the ones uh, you've put out just this year. Okay, great. Uh, so this year is very fruitful for me because I, I have uh, and I will have uh, about twice as many uh, releases as the last year. <laughs> and let me start from the smallest one, uh, the Nook. This is the smallest uh, knife uh, from my lineup. Uh, it fits in hands. It has a, a blade under three inches. So it's pretty small knife, but uh, I would say that is ergonomic and uh, very good for light EDC. Uh, this is BT line with uh, M390 steel uh, with hand wrapped satin blade. Oh, let me clean it. Uh, beautiful hand wrapped satin blade uh, with gentle uh, anodization on uh, the scales. And the inlay is uh, made from marble carbon fiber. Mm, mm, mm. And they are also prepared uh, the school uh, Bestec pivot, which I designed for them. Uh, I don't know if you can see yeah, it clear. I can see that. Yeah. But yes, this is Nuke, N U K E, like the bomb. Uh, <laughs> I have also uh, the other version. Ooh, that's this nice. one is uh, full black, uh, full black wash. Uh, on the both on the blade and handle and the inlay is from orange coral g10 uh, which reminds uh, a little bit of uh, you know rusty post post apocalyptic uh, feeling to this uh, <laughs> knife so <laughs> these are nuke two nukes and they are available uh, and all best tech dealers so. So, all right so uh, with this nuke um, it is notably smaller than your other designs Yes. What what was the uh, design need here? What did you what were you going for here besides just a smaller knife? Uh, it was uh, the challenge was to make blade length under three inches, and uh, I'm not good at designing uh, you know small knives because my brain always want to uh, design long and uh -huh. uh, big knives. <laughs> so this one was uh, pretty challenging, but I'm happy about it. Uh, it has. Uh, it has multiple uh, opening methods, uh, fidget friendly and and <laughs> very nice. Yeah, so. the uh, the blade shape of that strikes me as a very uh, utilitarian. That would be a great work knife uh, for draw cutting. And yeah, because it puts the point slightly below center, uh, but it still has a belly. Um, you know, it has a lot of the different useful uh, aspects of a work knife, but in a small little luxury item yes i like uh, a nice belly on my knives on my designs so <laughs> the more belly the better so this this was a 2022 release right yes that these are all uh, what i want to see these are mostly uh, releases from this year okay uh, so so the nuke and the second one i want to show you is the vigil uh Oh, you might show one. this knife on my Instagram last time because yeah. I love to take pictures of it. <laughs> and uh, this is the most complicated, uh, mm. you know, milling uh, that Bestec ever made on, on handles. Uh, and it took a lot of, you know, crazy work from them. Uh, the backspacer, uh, the pocket clip, everything is, is pretty crazy on this knife. Yeah. Let me ask you, when you drew this out, did you have all of the milling drawn out? Did you know exactly how you wanted that to be? Or did the milling dictate during the process? No. <laughs> everything, <laughs> I guess you uh, can't afford to do that, can you? <laughs> everything was, uh, you know, uh, precisely uh, planned by me. Mm -hmm. But the engineer who prepares a final 3D drawing, because they have to prepare their own final drawing for straight for the machine, right. he understands me so well. I've never seen this guy. I don't know who it is, but uh, <laughs> we kind of, you know, have the same flow. 
and and uh, he did his best and i'm very happy you know uh, with the details on, on mm -hmm. this on this knife so this is best tech vigil also premium re release with uh, if somebody like uh, you know to stare at the knife or to taking pictures yeah. this one is a photo bomb yeah uh, and this is the steel on on the new on this uh, visuals is also m390 and we have you know titanium handle with uh, uh, different finishes so i have this one uh, if you prefer you know something uh, different in colors uh, it's something like that with blue accents mm. so everybody can find something which fits better so what best tech vigil what's the blade length on the vigil i don't know <laughs> but it's uh, <laughs> it's like what three and a half something like that uh, something like that yeah yes so this knife to me uh is a striking combination of kind of art knife you look at the handle and it looks like uh, a um you know looks like it's a very complex uh design and build uh but it also looks pretty uh aggressive it looks like this thing could be uh sort of a sort of a fancy tactical knife what do you what do you think of in terms of purpose of this knife in in particular uh, it uh, i have a little tactical guy inside me uh, i love to flipping bali song and karambits and stuff like that so uh, yes uh, we can say that the goal is to uh, kind of uh, connect uh, the tactical and collectors uh, and EDC purpose and you can you know use it you can call it tactical knife you can call it uh, EDC knife uh, it's okay uh, for me because I love tactical stuff <laughs> by myself uh, I have a few really aggressive tactical blades in preparation they are so crazy uh, but we will see them next year. I thought your uh, long stretched out clip point, uh, whose name I can't remember now, a couple years ago, I thought that was a pretty aggressive knife. It was like over four it inches. Was fanga. The fanga, I, yeah. The fanga, yes. I will show you. Okay, yeah. I uh, <laughs> I do love that knife. Um, it's not often that you see um, uh, uh, such a good riff on the Bowie style knife. I, I really uh, like yes. this one. Um, yeah, look at that thing. So that's got kombu written all over it, and yet it looks very different. What do you think are your um, design signatures? Mm, you mean uh, about inspirations? I mean more about style. When someone looks at a knife and says, that's a kombu knife, what are they seeing uh, that's helping them identify it? I don't know. Maybe a few lines with all, we, which always. Uh, oh man, I really don't know how to uh, answer these questions because uh, uh, my design process is kind of, of channeling. Uh, it's very intuitive. I'm not forcing for anything, and it, this comes out. And uh, all the knives are, you know, kind of uh, materialization of dreams or something like that. So. Right. I really don't know why I uh, why I doing like this, but but it is something common in all my designs. And uh, some guys are, are are telling that they can uh, find uh, find out that uh, this is combo design, and it's huge compliment for me because yeah. it's not easy to keep them, you know, in one stylistic, but it's different. It's not easy to develop a genuine style. A lot of people try for style or or might um, adopt certain design flourishes to try and differentiate themselves. But really, when you see across a whole bunch of designs, you have 15 with Best Tech and probably a million others we haven't seen, you start to see similarities. For me, it's the overall organic profile of the thing. You can yes, kind of that's the that. words I missed. Overall organic profile. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer. They oh. frequently have uh, a fuller in the blade, which I I love. I mean, a lot of people put fullers yes. in, but this one your has knives, fuller too. Uh, the pocket clips are always unique and organic and interesting. 
Yeah. Maruka with Fuller, Persian style. Now, which one is okay. this? This is Bestek Maruka. M A R U K K A. <laughs> and is this I don't a new even one? know. No, this is a release from 2020. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I have uh, Persian. I really love them. Oh, yeah. man. That's a, that's a great, uh, great problem to have. Uh, I, I want you to show off the knife you showed me before we started rolling here. Um, you showed me something really special, something really interesting um, that you're going to be debuting in a month. Let's see what that is. Uh, this knife might be no, but uh, by, uh, by few guys from community, this is best egg, uh, Buvaya. And why I am so uh, smiling right now, because uh, in just one month, I'm uh, hitting my first blade show in Atlanta, <laughs> which I was, uh, I couldn't wait for that. And this year I have a table, 22K. I would love to uh, invite you there uh, to chat about uh, knives, about design. And this is Buvaya. Uh, and Bestek promised me that this knife will be uh, live at the uh, first day of show. They are doing their best to finish it because uh, the milling uh, on, on the blade is, is really pain in ass to, to finish, you know. <laughs> all, all around the, the knife is pretty complicated and uh, I guess they are not have uh, easy time preparing this model. <laughs> So, so there are a lot of different things happening here, but I would imagine, I mean, you mentioned milling the blade as being the issue. I mean, what's the blade steel, first of all? Uh, it will be M390, if I'm okay. not sure. So if M390 I'm not uh, wrong. Is a, I'm, that's a pretty hard steel, so doing all that milling in M390 is... Uh, so that's not just grinding we're seeing. That, that plunge line and that grind line, <laughs> that looks like it's cut into the blade, milled in. It's not ground... Yeah out is that right yes that's right but as i said uh, it for me it's a magic pencil <laughs> i design and they are doing all the hard work which i really appreciate so so what was the uh, what was the meaning behind this design this looks uh, more robust than a lot of your designs it looks uh, more uh, hard use what what were you thinking of going into this design uh, the, actually, Buvaya is the old design, and uh, it one of, it's one of the first knives I've ever designed. It was in 2016, I think, uh, and uh, Buvaya means a crocodile in mm. uh, Filipino language, uh, which I found out is a cool name, and uh, <laughs> yes, that's how uh, Buvaya came to life. I was thinking about something cosmic, futuristic, crocodile, or other, you know, crazy reptile. That's uh, funny. Uh, the name Buvaya. I was like, I know that word. How do I know that word? And in the Filipino Kali, martial art that that uh, I've been doing for a long time, we use a uh, Buvayan hand, and it's like a crocodile. Instead of crocodile grabbing, hand. Okay. Yeah, instead of grabbing someone's <laughs> arm, you just block it like this, so you can you can move to a different position without over engaging with a grip. Uh, so that's cool. I, I was like, I knew, I know, I know that word, but I look at this thing, and to me, it looks very different from your other work. It's obviously yours, uh, from the, from that sort of a wave pattern you have milled in there. You see that also in the in the Ornetta here. So there are some yes. of those signature um, signature moves there, so to speak, design moves. But the overall thing looks very different to me. It it really does look like a combat knife. It looks like a hard use tactical knife. Um, so it's kind of a, an exciting departure for you, design wise. Yes, actually, this knife uh, uh, was uh, made in few custom pieces in 2016 and 17 by my good friend BRR Knives from Poland, uh, and he made uh, around maybe five, seven, or, or ten pieces of this knife and uh, discontinue. And there was a lot of uh, collectors who wanted to uh, own this knife, uh, but never had a chance uh, to do that. And after all these years, I have, uh, you know, requests to make, uh, I have many requests to make this knife uh, as a full production knife with, uh, with Bestec 
and uh, here we are it's almost ready <laughs> and i will have my uh, piece one piece uh, uh, on the blade show and i'd love to show you guys you know uh, how it looks how it works and will it will be pleasure to talk about it <laughs> on the show so when a design is finished and uh, say for this one they they uh finish um the prototyping and they're and they're doing production now do you have anything to do with uh with the after marketing of it with the with the um, quality control is what i'm interested in do they send them to you to look over or is that just done in the prototyping phase and then and then they handle it from there uh, so uh we usually making one prototype before a final product i think it's uh, uh, uh it's very precise work because uh, before getting proto before prototyping, uh, I, I will making sure that everything is you know as it uh, need to be, and after prototyping, uh, there is always one chance to make some corrections and final product uh, you know um, should be great. And and uh, Bastek always send me prototypes to check, and and after they uh, finish. They sending me final pieces of, uh, let's say, each one finish uh, of final product, and and I have it in my hand. And uh, if something is, you know, uh, could be better, could be done better, I always taking my notes for uh, upcoming designs to to uh, level up the game. Right. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, you're in a great position. You're like a, a Hollywood director who has final cut in a way because because this is not a, an OEM situation where you're a an independent designer and they're making it for you and they send it to you and you do all the quality control and send it out. You are a designer working for them and yeah. and and you are doing you're you're giving them a signature look for sure and they are giving you a um, an avenue to distribute your work. So I'm, yeah. I'm just kind of wrapping my mind around this because I talk to a lot of people who use Best Tech as their OEM, and it's a different process, obviously. And, I know. Uh, yeah. And 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 as I sit here, I, I think um, I see the benefits of both, of both ways of doing it. But Absolutely. right now, I'm definitely seeing the benefit on your end of things here. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, the mo most benefit of uh, having own company and OEMing uh, uh, own designs is that you probably earn uh, more money, you know, because uh, you are the entrepreneur who, uh, you know, have to worry about all the aspects. Mm. And uh, I am in the situation where, uh, where I can 100% focus on uh, creative work, on designing, on, on the designing process during uh, prototyping, and also, I am doing uh, taking a lot of pictures of these knives, and uh, you know, trying to promote uh, mm -hmm. products through my pictures. So I'm mostly doing creative work, and all the marketing process, all the pricing, uh, all the quality control is on Vestex side, and they are uh, the guys who has uh, a lot of things to worry about. Uh, but it's not that I'm not worried because, you know, uh, I'm kind of obsessed uh, to chasing perfection mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, uh, I don't know how to say it. I'm not, uh, I, uh, you know, when I get a final product, it's not like, wow, we got it. We can, uh, uh, you know, move forward with another one. Uh, I'm often very uh, pissed off. I can't even, uh, you know, uh, enjoy this process because there is the one small detail uh, that I forgot or something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, uh, you know, noticeable for you, uh, but, uh, you know, my obsessive mind is, is uh, chasing perfection. So <laughs> it's always, uh, uh, it's also... Uh, pretty stressful for me, you know, to, to, to get uh, the final vision uh, in the product. Sure. But I am doing my best as well as the best tech. So I, <laughs> yes. Well, that's, uh, that's how an artist 
does it. That's how an artist thinks. They paint a painting, hang it on the wall, live with it for a while, look at it every day, and all the little mistakes pop up. Other people walk by that painting or look, glance at the painting. They don't see them. They see the painting for what it is. It's something hanging on the wall that looks good. But the artist is looking at, man, that green, I knew that green was off, but I didn't know how to resolve it at the time. Now, if I were to go back into that painting, which I'm not going to, I would add this and that, you know, yes, I would imagine absolutely. it's even worse or, or more profound when you're creating, a, uh, designing a product. And then that product is solidified in the real world through machinery and a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of other people. You can't just tweak. You can't just say, oh, t you know, I should have done this with that design you you do have to save up yes. that lesson learned for the next for the next design uh, absolutely uh, me uh, the same as you i am keeping uh, my knives uh, on the wall uh, and every every day you know chasing uh, every every day you know watching them uh, taking uh, staring at them and you know i didn't i do not hide it to my drawer but all my mistakes are, you know, visible every day. Yeah. I can even show you uh, real quick how it looks. So, uh, ah, yeah, a bunch of knives on the wall, and and yeah, we are doing. Uh, I'm very dedicated to what I do, and this is very important for me because I have great blessing and opportunity to uh, do my passion for living. It was almost impossible uh, for my parents in Poland uh, a few de decades ago. And now we have beautiful times when mm -hmm. the creator uh, can, uh, you know, uh, spread his vision to the world. And uh, that's great for me. I'm living the dream. I am doing my passion for, for living and I'm uh, adding something for this great community. That's yeah. a win. Absolutely. Yes. yes, you're a man in the arena. And, and when you're done, you're leaving behind knives. And that's what's uh, like, uh, that's what's exciting to me. It's a real, actual thing. This is coming from someone who um, has always prized individual creation, like the making of paintings or like the making of one individual thing. But the idea of having a design and then having it manufactured and spread worldwide um, is very exciting to me because it's kind of outside of my, uh, of my original way of thinking something. Uh, but when I think about uh, someone in your position uh, and it's an, it's a, um, it's a great position from my perspective as a designer. And we were talking about the pros and cons of owning a company and then having an OEM make your work or being a designer for a company uh, like yourself. And, and I think if you're uh, an, an owner of a knife company and you're having someone OEM, your work it's the stress of are people going to buy yeah. this am i yes, in absolutely. over my head um you know when when do i make the next move when do i reinvest the money i've made and all that kind of stuff um whereas someone like you as a designer you don't have to worry about that stuff what you have to worry about is the public and tastes you know are people sick of my designs do they want to see something else from me do they like you know uh just having some understanding of the creative you, world and art you got you, your, your style you want to maintain a style so people know that's a kombu knife but you don't want to stagnate and stay in the same place so. absolutely uh, so okay, well, how do you, what do you do to what do you do to sort of keep things fresh for yourself in that design process i'm trying to design new knife every day and i have a let's say i have sketchbook with 100 designs 200 designs i i don't even know how many of knives I've drawn in my life. And uh, I'm trying to, you know, take something best and send uh, to best tech uh, and always trying to make another one different than uh, the one before. Uh, but at the same time, uh, speaking the same, the same language of design yeah. and it's it's not that easy, but I think so far is uh, is so good. <laughs> but I'm humble, and uh, I don't know if I um, uh, if uh, oh I don't know how to say it. Mm. The point is that 
Oh man! Oh man! That's <laughs> okay. Just you can just switch Excuse your. Me. You Sorry, go. I, I'm do, I'm going to the plane mode. I forgot about it. Seems uh, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty between uh, the DC area and Poland. I'm sure uh, Gregors will be back with us in a quick minute. But uh, that's uh, that's a big. Conundrum. A small technical problem. I'm back. <laughs> Everything. Small technical. Be fine. All right. So yeah, we were just talking about design and keeping design fresh while still maintaining your style, so that your work is recognizable, but that it doesn't get stagnant or stale. And uh, um, so uh, I'm not limited to uh, exact uh, shape of blade, to exact shape of handle. Uh, I have an encyclopedia of uh, historical knives. I'm studying, you know, uh, searching for, for new blade shapes, uh, handle shapes. Uh, and let's say um, I have a, a variety of sizes. I have small knife. I have, you know, middle size. Yeah. But I, I have also prototype with me of uh, something you know Ooh. very big yeah. and and this is something i can you know juggle uh, the sizes the blade shapes and and stuff like that i have tanto blade in uh, preparation so <laughs> uh, and i when i have a shape i'm trying you know to 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 get this uh, um, the the common flow of of uh, the, the designer language, yeah. Right. <laughs> Excuse me for my English. Oh, you, your English is awesome, by the way. Thank um, you. But I like hearing that um, that you refer to an encyclopedia of historical blades. As you can see from behind me, I love uh, historical ethnographic weapons, and and uh, and I have a bunch of those books too. And um, that's one thing I could see, like when you when you came out with the. Um, with the fanga that was one thing that i could see immediately like okay he's looking at bowies at bowie, bowie. Knives. my favorite and, shape of knife oh uh, man I, I, you know every, blade. every time i say that i'm like yeah but i also love and then i could list all the others but i love a bowie and uh and to me this was a, an exciting design because you could see that uh, I had known you up until this point as a very modern designer. And then I saw that and I was like, okay, here's a modern interpretation of a classic historical blade. What, um, what, what historical blades do you love the most? If you could have anything hanging on the wall behind you uh, from history, what would it be? Uh, for example, uh, the Tyra mm -hmm. uh, is uh, my uh, interpretation of uh, original Puka blade. Mm -hmm. uh, Scandinavian blade and is you know I took the original shape and started to uh, making something around it and I finished with something like this. Uh, so yeah, I that <laughs> that, that uh, design in particular is cool because it does look like a puko, especially with that bevel um, and the overall profile of the blade, but it also is a little bit sleeker. A little bit more futuristic and i look at that thing and i want to stab with it <laughs> it just looks like you know a thrust please don't do it <laughs> no 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 uh stab into a tree or something yeah. but uh, uh it's aggressive like vigil they are aggressive you know why because they they have uh, v-shaped uh, blades you know they are uh -huh. l looking like car like sport car something that wants to drive very fast you know that, right that's why they are so aggressive um, but for example, you know, having a knife like Nuke mm -hmm. is, is not as um, tactical uh, and don't uh, bring you the primal instinct to stabbing and cutting <laughs> any, any living creature, you know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but uh, so uh, historically speaking, though, what are your favorite historical knives or swords? What, what are the... You would love to have a version of a historical. Uh, I live in Poland, and recently I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, studying uh, Polish uh, uh, blades history, and uh, there is something uh, 
like uh, Polish saber, uh, mm -hmm. shabla, sable, uh, saber, right? Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I would like to make a variation of, you know, uh, of Polish uh, saber uh, as a folding knife. We will see in future if... if uh, oh, also, I can recommend you a, a scene from classic Polish movie, uh, Pan Wołodyjowski, it's hard to say, but they have a scene of uh, saber fighters, which uh, was called uh, one of the best uh, fights in the cinema, uh, saber fights uh, in, in the history of cinema all around I, the world. I think I've seen it. It's, it's in the woods in front of some big rocks, right? Uh, no, uh, no, it's the people oh. around and uh, the rain is there is a heavy rain and two guys small one and big one are mm. fighting uh, sabers and they are doing uh, this uh, uh, very well like uh, like they did uh, those days, you know. Yeah. Uh, if actually if you look, um, you know how YouTube just kind of sends you stuff you're interested in from stuff that you've looked at before. I've gotten a lot of, uh, for a while, I was getting a lot of Polish saber fighting videos in my feed. And uh, one of them was from a movie and they did say it was one of the best saber fights ever. But this is one I'm remembering. It took place in the woods. But then also there are these great videos with two guys. Uh, they're on a hilltop and they show a bunch of different, uh, they do a bunch of different kind of sparring things, but they're in the traditional, I believe they're shirtless, but they're in traditional Polish garb. And they have these long curved sabers and their, yes, yes. their style of fighting is so cool because it looks like a combination of European, Filipino and Sikh saber fighting, you know, where they whip it from behind their back. And uh, it's very interesting. I, I did not know until these videos started flooding my feed that Poland had such a rich saber fighting and sword fighting history. Yes, Poland is a very uh, old country. Uh, it's like a thousand years or something like that. When uh, Poland was uh, <laughs> when Poland was start and and uh, yes uh, we have very big traditions uh, people uh, nowadays people you know wearing the old school uh, tradition uh, uh, clothes and uh, they are meeting together making uh, tournaments uh, of nights and mm. they are you know it's very common in Poland. Uh, so that must explain, like I said, uh, the the Ostop Hells and the and the Kambu and um, and uh, uh, who's the gentleman we were just talking about with the with the chili Trolsky. pepper Petrolski and and uh, and and also BRR. Lots of action happening in Poland now. Uh, do you know if if it's mostly designers? I know Trolsky is a uh, himself. He forges. He's a knife maker. Yes. Yes. Uh... He's forging, he's knife making. Uh, BRR is also a knife maker. Ostap is a maker of uh, knacks, the oh. Mjolnir. Mm -hmm. I will show you. This is his main product. Oh yeah, and then and then he has designs through. That's pretty cool. And then it's a if you're not uh, if you're not watching, it's a little punch, a little punch knuck. It, it looks like a T yes, and it yes. fits in your in your hand uh and oh stop hell he's got a bunch of knives that uh through who is it not best tech but someone else yes uh, with best tech with oh, we with knife that. and uh, also with concept i believe okay all right. uh, is a freelancer and he's uh, working as a designer with a few brands okay so so yeah it, it is interesting how um different cultures uh, little knife communities knife worlds pop up and then they have an emblematic look I feel like Polish knives definitely. Uh, Russian knives have a have a certain look. South African knives, and uh, it's just exciting to see different cultures differentiate themselves. Uh, but come and American together. knives and American knives. I don't know. I I don't I don't actually know if I can put my finger on American knives right now. Uh, it's a very mixed bag because we have. Okay. It's a place that's difficult and expensive to actually manufacture the knives. But we have so many knife people and knife designers and enthusiasts here. So half of them or some percentage of them are making knives here themselves by hand. And then others are 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 OEMing the work uh, out in, in other countries. And so when I have and I have plenty of knives by friends and 
colleagues who have designed their knives here and have had them made over there. And when I'm holding a Wii made knife, say for instance, by someone who lives in the States, I can't help but think this is an international knife. You know, obviously it's a it's an American design created in China. Like, so what is an American knife? It 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 it, it <laughs> makes an interesting question. It's welcome to globalism. Everything yeah. is uh, connected uh, so much uh, these days that, <laughs> you know, I'm a globalist, I can say, uh, because uh, I love people from all around the world. If they are good people, I don't care if they are from China, from Poland, from USA. <laughs> they can be my brothers and sisters. And I'm very happy. I'm a child of globalist, designer from Poland working with Chinese knives, uh, with uh, German and American materials, uh, you know, then selling it worldwide in the USA, Canada, uh, Russia, and uh, everywhere. So all world is invited in this process. And ah, <laughs> that's I love that. absolutely amazing. It wasn't possible a few decades ago. So I feel lucky. I feel blessed. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you're a world citizen, uh, you know, uh, uh, working in on the world stage. Um, and, and I love that. And there's something romantic about that. But there is also something to be said for national identity. So uh, you managed to do both. And I think um, and I think, you know, I said, what's an American knife? I think what what it really is, just that since we're sitting here talking, is the innovation that goes into the design. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, when I think of manufacturing capacity, I think of China. When I think of innovation and design, you know, I might think the United States. Uh, Absolutely. So, so that's, I guess that's where I would, uh, that's where I would differentiate. But that's not to say that, that the innovation is only coming from here. It's not, it's coming from everywhere, but, um, you know, yourself included. Here's I'm a, not innovative. I'm just taking the oldest tool, you know, and making it. <laughs> look uh, aggressive and maybe you know uh, pretty cool yeah but i'm not engineer i i i don't see myself in innovating you know a new lock mechanism or something like that maybe new shape which is extremely hard to find new shape right now everything I've... has been uh, made so far yeah but remember they said that after the telegraph came out they're like everything's been invented now boys we can we can talk to someone far away and look at how far <laughs> you're we're right go. you're um, right and so look this, where we are yeah if you're looking at the screen right now you'll see a little uh, tease of the video we'll be posting of um my close-up of the of the kombu designed ornetta in g10 now this is a cool trend this and the uh, the Kalsa, um, right? The Kalsa is that what it's called? Casta, Casta, Casta. K A S T A. Now, the, the, those are two knives. This one here is a um, similar to the Ornetta we were just showing off. It's it is a um, more budget friendly uh, version of a model. So, tell me a little bit about this move to take some of your designs and uh, manufacture them uh, less expensively? Uh, it was made uh, by request of uh, customers, uh, fans, collectors. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them uh, cannot afford, you know, uh, $250, $300 uh, knife, but they like uh, to have uh, one of uh, my designs in their collection. And now they can have, uh, you know, uh, one of them, like Casta or Ornetta, for kind of half price or even uh, less. Because right. the Ornetta, I'd like to tell you that Ornetta, which you handle, is the one with uh, N690 steel. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has also titanium uh, accents, like uh, sculptured pocket, pocket clip is uh, titanium. Uh, and there will be other one uh, with D2 steel, uh, with steel pocket clip, uh, and I believe it will be half price of this one, and uh, it will cost around seventy, eighty dollars. So, so it's really affordable for <laughs> for everybody who want uh, to have combo design in their collection. So I'm very happy about it. Well, that's a great. Um... 
I am too. That's a that's a. It's great that they have the ability to scale down and to still be giving some of these high end flourishes like the milling, like the design. Basically, it's the high end. It's the whole thing's a high end flourish. So it's nice that they can uh, put it in something um, less, you know, more yes, attainable. Uh, for example, this knife, <laughs> Vigil. I I can see it, you know, uh, in. Uh, more affordable version because uh, it's too ma too many details and it can only be made in titanium in my opinion so uh, there are some designs which are possible to convert into more affordable mm -hmm. versions and uh, some are not working this way but orneta uh, the one you hold and and the casta uh, was you know well known knives uh, they were uh, field tested let's say mm -hmm. uh, field tested maybe in drawers or, or, of collectors. That was their field. Uh, but yeah, right. uh, now they can, you know, uh, buy a more affordable uh, version and uh, put it into real work, you know, because uh, these knives are uh, workers. They're not only, you know, for cleaning, for cleaning and, and for flipping. <laughs> they can do uh, real things. <laughs> that, well, that's, that's another thing I was going to mention is that now, now that, one can get the Ornetta for a third of the price of the original. They actually might take it out of their pocket and use it because, I mean, in a, in a sense, it's a, it's a precious, it's a luxury item. We know that. And it's a precious, it's a precious thing. And you might, you might, uh, I don't know. Some, some people are different about this, but I'm, I'm a little bit uh, precious with some of my more expensive knives, you know? Uh, so I'd be much more apt to bust out the N690 version of the Ornetta and go to town yeah. and actually see what a useful tool it is, as opposed to just being a cool looking and fun to flip, well-made and awesomely designed knife. It's, it's uh, really a uh, less struggle to, you know, destroy uh, cutting edge on <laughs> the knife, uh, which is more affordable than in, you know, $300 knife. <laughs> and uh, I believe most of my premium releases from Best Tech are, you know, safe queens. Uh, they are going from hands to hands. They are been flipping and uh, keeping in dry and warm drawer. <laughs> so this is uh, true collectors. Uh, <laughs> But there is uh, there uh, is some people who really uh, use it. Yes. And mm. so the way yeah. I see it is, uh, if I were in your position, it would it would be a mixed emotion. Part of me would say, I love that people think my stuff is so precious that it's like artwork, and they want to keep it safely away. But at the same time, it's a knife, it's a tool, man. Use it. <laughs> yes. Hey. So uh, before we wrap up here, I want you to show off that big giant prototype you had in your hands a few minutes ago. And uh, are we? Is this one that people are going to see at table twenty two K at the yes. show? Yes, this one also should be uh, available. I think uh, if not uh, at the Blade Show time, uh, but uh, maybe a little bit uh, later, but uh, really soon. So yeah, month okay. or two. And uh, it's right. a very big knife. 12.6 inches overall length. Ooh. I have uh, fairly big hands and this knife, you know, you can grab it like this and, and you have a uh, long reach. No, yeah. maybe I, I'm not uh, doing good thing, like stabbing it, but it's kind of a tactical knife for me. Uh, and I also, just uh, found out a uh, name for this knife, and uh, the name will be Fairchild. Fairchild. Uh, Fairchild, like this plane. Uh, yeah, the A10. The big American plane from World War II, oh. uh, which is uh, kind of remind me of. Uh, I was uh, a little bit in in inspired, but uh, by old school big planes, you know, and this is best like Fairchild. It will be a little bit different, but it will be only cosmetic changes and overall shape uh, is like that. Uh, very big, big guy, you know. <laughs> I don't know what more to say. It's a very fruitful year for me and a lot of new designs will, uh, will come soon. Uh, okay, 
so so you were saying it remind it, it you were inspired by the Fairchild. Um, yes. And I was and I was going off thinking didn't didn't Fairchild make the A10 Warthog originally? But then I I could be wrong about that. Um, that's a that's another cool American airplane. But. I not follow uh, American uh, post war history, but uh, I was kind of scrolling internet and found uh, original. Uh, pictures of, of this plane and that uh, make me draw you know the knife like this uh, that thing is cool so now uh, what i really like about this i love the overall shape i am a big fan of the warren cliff like blade um but what i really love is that it's a big knife i love big knives and your choices are very limited when you love big knives so to see some high design uh, uh high quality best tech large knife designed by you is exciting because like i said i've got a i've got a huge collection of huge cold steel knives and then a very small collection of other large knives and i would like that to grow so uh that is an exciting thing to see i like big knives too but uh, i was also uh, always worry if uh, they will sell good because yeah. if there were a market for such a big knives which are not, you know, EDC friendly. They are pretty heavy. Yeah. Uh, they are uh, too big, you know, for your pocket. Uh, that's why we made only 200 pieces uh, of uh, this knife mm -hmm. uh, to see if they are, you know, big enough to find uh, <laughs> yeah. a group of fans. That, but this enough. is a comparison with huh. the, my smallest uh, knife, the Nook and the Fairchild. I'm the largest. Well, Gregor, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast and showing off uh, your latest creations. Uh, 15 designs with Best Tech so far and uh, exclusively through Best Tech. I, I think, like you said, you are living the dream. It sounds awesome. And it's great that you work with a company that is so good at what they do and can take your very complicated organic designs and make them real. So uh, uh, yes. remind people of how they can get in touch with you, how they can view your work, and then where they can meet you at Play Show. Absolutely. So guys, uh, if you want to follow my uh, designer's work, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's uh, uh, K-O-M-B-O-U. Uh, then you can find uh, the newest things uh, going on. And uh, absolutely, it will be pleasure for me to meet you on Blade Show, I will uh, be on the table 22K. Uh, I will be by myself <laughs> with a full table of Bestech knives. I will have each one of my design uh, made by Bestech. So you can come uh, chat with me and uh, examine uh, each product uh, from my lineup. <laughs> so it will be really... <laughs> That's why I'm smiling because... Uh, <laughs> I finally uh, want to feel the magic of the biggest knife show in the world. And <laughs> I have already a ticket, a plane ticket, and my suitcase is already packed and I'm ready <laughs> Wait, to fly. Waiting. In. Yes. <laughs> it's waiting by the door. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm ready to go. I can flip my uh, hat back and go to america <laughs> <laughs> we don't all wear our hats like that <laughs> gregor no, thanks so kidding. much for coming on the show man i really appreciate it and i can't wait to shake thank your hand you, in a little over a month and see all your knives in person uh, thank it's you a pleasure, man. my pleasure thank you see you on blade show see you at blade show <laughs> goodbye Do you like the sound of the alphanumeric combinations m390 204p and 20cv but bristle at 8cr 13mov and AUS a you are a knife junkie. Probably worse. That's right. Probably worse. Uh, so there he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Gregor Garbos Grabowski uh, Kambu. That's a little easier for me to say. By the way, the Polish language is absolutely beautiful. I used to watch a lot of Krzysztof Kieslowski movies, and at one point I thought I wanted to learn Polish. Uh, pipe dreams, I suppose. In any case, uh, join us here next Sunday for another great interview uh, with a luminary of the knife world. And uh, also check us out on Wednesday for the midweek supplemental where I go over new knives in the knife world, new knives in my collection, and uh, highlight some other great stuff. Thursday night, of course, 10 p.m. is owned by Thursday Night Knives right here on YouTube, or uh, it's also live on Twitch and uh, Facebook. 
So check us out on all of those spots. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, I implore you, do not take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Ninth Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.